ULM Warhawks trying to build a program. It's Locked on Sunbelt. You are Locked on Sunbelt, your daily podcast on the Sunbelt Conference, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, Dave Schultz, Locked on Sunbelt, your team every day. Today's episode brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. As playoffs wind down, the sports stop sporting like we want them to. But this summer, FanDuel is hooking up all customers with a boost or a bonus daily. That's right. There's something for everyone every day, all summer long. Visit FanDuel.com to get started. All right. Sorry for the delay. Did a 15-hour drive uh, yesterday. So uh, we were getting up this morning uh, and doing the episode. Let's talk uh, ULM. They got a wide open quarterback competition. There are a few guys on the roster if they're all still there. And what are the 2024 expectations? All right, so I love the direction that ULM is heading, all right? Um, John Hartwell, the AD, you know, who openly campaigned and was this close from Utah State, right? From uh, this close to getting the Auburn AD job, okay? Um, I've never heard anybody do that before. And uh, he's not shy. Um and so he was doing that a few years ago. Ends up taking the ULM job. Um, John Hartwell is a very smart man. He knows there's a, I mean, there is, you, you, it'd be tough to get two diametrically opposed programs with Auburn and ULM, right? Um, Auburn does not have a lack of interest. It does not have a lack of funds. Uh, in, in fact, it ha- may have too many too much interest, right? And the people with the funds seem to be dictating what's going on. That's the problem there, if that is a problem. All right, so he ends up with a ULM job. uh, And one of the things that he said is, you know, one of the problems is, you know, getting an infusion of cash. Uh, And he took that job just as the NIL stuff was going on. uh, And, you know, we got to get the community involved. So one of the things that we always kind of, Matt, we, uh, me dance around is, you know, going to ULM is always tough, not because of the home crowd, but because of the lack of the home crowd. There's a lack of atmosphere where you're going to a basketball game or a football game. You have to bring the, not the intensity, but the incitement, right? When you go on the road, right? It's always great to hear the booze. We brought this up with the Rocky boy. Um, you get jacked up for the quiet. Of the stadium. Well, if the stadium's already quiet and you score a touchdown, you know, it's not that exciting. So ULM has always been a, you know, in the decade or so that I've covered the Sun Belt, always a difficult place to play because it's on you to, to do it, whether usually it's the home fans that get the get everybody jacked up. And uh, you know, John Hartwell has, you know, laid the groundwork, I think he's been there a couple of years already, um, you know, making some changes with the coaches and, you know, trying to get the program heading in the right direction. Now, I don't think that, you know, the sky is the limit when it comes to ULM. There is a, a ceiling, but they're nowhere near it now. They were nowhere near it for a while. And certainly in football, there's just too much talent in Louisiana and especially Northern Louisiana that they should be able to get to go to their uh, college. And, you know, you got to improve the facilities, improve the stadium. Um, You got to get people to buy in. Uh, And obviously that's not easy because, you know, it's always been seen as a stepping stone um, for the next job. Right. But they had, you know, Terry Bowden, who wasn't looking at it as a stepping stone and just could not get it, could not get it going to where it needed to be. Did have a couple of four win seasons, but just couldn't, you know, they competed a lot last year. They had a couple of wins that they should have won and they just never got it going um, or couldn't keep it going. And now they bring in uh, Brian Vincent, who, again, you know, through his UAB days, knows what ULM is all about. Uh, this is not some, you know, pie in the sky, um, 
you know, has, you know, a misconception of what ULM is. Um, he's well aware. All right. So much so that 70 new players are coming in out of an 85 scholarship situation. That's a lot, right? I mean, we're talking, you know, if you do 30 these days, that's not unheard of, but that's a lot. All right. And there's always turnover, whether it's, you know, you know, less miles to Ed Orgeron, uh, Ed Orgeron to Brian Kelly, you don't fit the scheme. You know, you're not the kind of kid that they want, whatever the case is. You know, I'm sure there was, you know, a bunch of guys that left Syracuse from Fran Brown came in and, you know, Georgia State's doing that. So there's always going to be some turnover and now even more so with the transfer portal these days. But when you're doing, you know, more than three quarters of your team, um, it's going to take a minute to, you know, get everybody accustomed, right? I heard, um, I did watch, a, uh, on a side note, Del McGee presser around spring. I was trying to get a picture of him for the, for the podcast that we did for that one. And, um, you know, it's tough to get the coaches, you know, when, when they were doing it because, you know, he got hired and they were already in spring ball, you know, you got to get the coaches on the same page. Forget about the players on the same page. You got to get the coaches on the same page. Now, you know, you got a bunch of new players coming in, a bunch. And it's, can you get them all on the same page? I mean, you, you know, you brought in a bunch, you know, when you got there, when Brian Vincent got there for spring ball. And now you're bringing in more, you know, when when it's fall practice. I don't know why it's fall practice. It's the end of July, beginning of August, but it is what it is. Um, and if you bring in another 30 or 40, you know, A, you're going to get a bunch of competition, which is always good. But, you know, the guys who thought they were going to play are now not going to play. Um. And it'll be interesting to see on how all that plays out. My overall feeling is ULM is going to be better. And we'll get to the expectations game a little bit later on. But I'm not sure if that's going to be reflective in the record. I've said this, you know, a, a few times. I think teams are going to know that they played ULM. I think that's what it's going to be. It's just going to be a tough game. They should have had some wins last year. They kind of blew some games. Um, at least one off the top of my head. And uh, we'll see how they compete. But regardless of what people say, there are easier games than others. It's just, that's just the case. Okay. And, you know, you have, you know, App State and Texas State. And Georgia State's not on that level. So if you're playing Georgia State and you have App State or Troy on the schedule, or not Troy, but uh, Texas State, um, Troy could be the same boat. But, you know, Georgia State is going to be easier, at least in theory, than those teams. Same thing with ULM. You got ULM on the schedule. Don't kid yourself. Coaches and players sort of chalk that up as a win. When you're ULM and you look at the schedule, there's not a whole lot of ULMs on that schedule. That's going to be the problem, all right? We'll get to that in the 2024 expectations at the end. But they have, as far as I know, a wide open quarterback competition. And it is not lacking candidates. We'll do that when we come back. Let me tell you about FanDuel. I love sports. I love them so much. I never want them to stop. But as the playoffs have winded down, we get fewer games. And the sports aren't sporting like I want them to. But FanDuel lets me keep the sports going whenever I want. All I have to do is open up the app and dream up bets anytime I'm in the mood. And this summer, FanDuel is hooking up all customers with a boost or a bonus daily. That's right. There's something for everyone every day, all summer long. So head over to FanDuel.com and start making the most out of your summer. FanDuel, official sports betting partner of Major League Baseball. Eventually, I will go over... You know, the closer we get to the season, I'll do the over-unders again. We'll compare them to where they were when they were announced in June, and I'll I'll pick them. Um, I may even roll the dice with ULM going over because I do think they're going to beat somebody. I don't know who it is. I do think they're going to beat somebody they're not expected to. All right. Um, let's continue on with the show. 
All right, Dave Schultz, Locked On Sunbelt, your team uh, every day. Uh, the quarterback room is as follows. This is on, this is the current ULM roster, okay? Former Cajun and I at a Wachita Christian school, Hunter Herring. 6'4", 228-pound junior. He's been there. He's out of West Monroe, all right? Aiden Armenta, a redshirt sophomore out of New Mexico, is from Albuquerque. You got Brooks. Anzalone, or maybe Anzalone, 6'2", 205 pounds, out of Monroe. Went to Neville High. Uh, General Booty, which is a great name uh, in, you know, and all of the uh, lineage. Out of Shreveport, um, although I guess he went to Allen, Texas, and obviously transferring from Oklahoma. That's four guys already. You got Isaiah Velez, a six-year kid. Uh, actually, Coffeyville Community College, which is hilarious. Also, FIU in Eastern Kentucky. He is out of Miami Northwestern. You got Reese Mooney, redshirt freshman, Denham Springs. Uh, went to Denham Springs High. You got Landon Graves, little guy, 5'11", 191 pounds, sophomore. Also out of uh, Wachita Christian High School in uh, Monroe, uh, Louisiana. So that is Herring, Armenta, Anzalone, Moody. Velez, Mooney, and Graves. That's seven guys. Did I get that right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven quarterbacks. Uh, and I don't know um, if you have a freshman coming in. All right. Let's see. So, again, is it going to be Hunter Herring? He's got some experience playing for ULM. Is it General Booty who went to uh, Oklahoma? Does he get the, does he get the gig? Uh, it is going to be wide open and that could be one of the things and i don't really necessarily believe the coaches when they say that you'll find out when you know we we take the field that may be the case in this one can i you know there's no there's again there's nobody more paranoid than college football coaches um but i also think that you know they'll have a decision usually it's two weeks beforehand whether we find out or not we don't know um let me see. They signed 38 commits in the 24 class. <laughs> um, they got uh, Jim Ogle out of uh, Jacksonville, Alabama, um, 180, uh, 6'2", 183 pounds. So that is going to be eight quarterbacks on the roster come August. Let's see if anybody else came in. Well, there's General Booty. There's Reese Mooney. That's two quarterbacks transferring in. So um, you have options, right? You know, the, the old saying is if you have two quarterbacks, you don't have one. Well, the Cajuns have a couple. And so they are okay because they have two experienced quarterbacks. I think they will name one, but in case one goes down, they're kind of set at the backup role. Uh, if Ben Woldridge is healthy, you have Chandler Fields. If Chandler, if Woldridge is not healthy, Chandler Fields is the guy, and the Cajuns can feel confident uh, that he can move the offense. What ULM is going to do is, who knows? Now, someone has to take the reps with the first team. I mean, they're again, they're going to. I mean, <laughs> they're going to split this up, right? If you have at least eight quarterbacks, you got four over here and four over there. Somewhere along the way, they're going to have to break that down. And it's probably going to be pretty quickly. All uh, right. Because you can't split the reps for the first three weeks of camp or so and then have the guys ready, you know, two weeks out, you know, rally around the leader type of deal before the first week of, of game week prep. Um, although, in this case, maybe you do take it all the way and they'll name a quarterback, you know. Sat, you know, Saturday after the scrimmage, the last scrimmage that they have, or, you know, when they show up for practice on a Monday or Tuesday type of deal, right? Um, but it will be interesting to see uh, what they do um, and how quickly it gets pared down, all right? And so Vincent will be, fortunately, I won't be there to grill him, uh, but instead of asking him, you know, when he likes to have a quarterback named. And all these guys say, well, we'd like to have him one named as soon as possible. You know, it's much easier, right? When, you know, 
App State has Joy Aguilar ready to go, that's one less thing they have to worry about. Now you got to worry about a backup, as Sean Clark will tell you. That's exactly what they needed. So you got to make sure. Same thing with Ricky Ronnie. You know, we have our quarterback in Grant Wilson, but we got to be ready. What if? With Vincent, it would be, how do you go paring this down? You have eight quarterbacks on your roster, and he may correct that at the time. How do you get these guys with reps? Where would, do we have a standing right now? Um, you know, and, and does this, is this a, is it a daily thing? Is it a weekly thing? That was the other thing. Who, who did that? Was that the, I think the Cajuns did that last year. Maybe it was in the South. I thought maybe it was the Cajuns. Maybe it was, you know, Desimo who, when, um, uh, Ben Wildridge was cleared that, it alleviates the idea that you can have a good or bad day and your position on the team changes. Just go out and have a day. If it's bad, come back and do better the next day. If it was good, come back and do it again. You're still the backup type of deal, right? And so what the coaches say is that allows players to just worry about the play and not worry about the depth chart. So somewhere along the way, you know, Coach Vincent is going to have to pare down. These are the, you know, we've gone from eight, I don't know about four, but down to three guys and maybe down to two. We'll see how quickly that gets pared down. All right. What can be the expectations uh, for ULM in 2024? We will do that when we come back. See if we can get this out right the first time. Locked on SEC with Chris Gordy. Be sure to check that out. It is day three of SEC Media Days, and he's got you covered. Does a great job talking to a lot of the coaches and the players, and he will play a lot of that stuff from Media Days throughout the year when the big games are happening throughout the season. So go check that out. Uh, it is Locked on SEC. Chris Gordy does a great job. He's local in Houston, so now he's right there by a and can do the Austin thing with Texas. Uh, and he does a tremendous job. So you got watch next. Go check it out. Chris Gordy, Locked On SEC. Also, thanks. We're up. Um, did I see that right? We had uh, 24, 1,324 um, subscribers. That's outstanding. Really appreciate that. Seems it grows when I don't post it. <laughs> Post a video, it's is not a great hint, uh, as it turns out. But, um, oh, we lost one 1,200, 1,323. So, still pretty good. Um, still trying to get that 1,500. I'm still gonna push. I still have hope that we can get to 1,500 by August 31st. Okay, 2024 expectations for uh, ULM. Let's see if we can find the win totals because I think, I think it's like two and a, is it even two and a half? Um, and again, when you don't see a lot of Sunbelt win totals, when you don't see a lot of patsies, um, on your schedule, because it's ULM is usually uh, the cakewalk. Okay. Um, all right. Let's see here. That's a different one but uh ulm one and a half that is rough okay so checking out the schedule all right jackson state's at home and you get uab at home can you beat uab all right that's a nice little home game presume it was scheduled before coach vincent got the gig uh, but, you know, he gets his buddy Trent Elfer coming into uh, Monroe. Can you start out the season 2-0 and and beat that one and a half? I'm gonna, if it's still one and a half, I'm going to take the over. Because, again, they're going to beat somebody that they're not supposed to beat. All right. If this was Jackson State and Deion Sanders and Shadour Sanders were still there and Travis Hunter were still there, it'd be a different story. But you got to beat Jackson State to begin with. They started off and kick off the season uh, on a Thursday night. That could be one win. You get UAB at home. Could that be two? Because the next, you're going at Texas. Then you open up the season at Troy. 
We don't know what Troy is going to be. Troy is a big question mark, but as of recent, they are inherently better than a ULM. All right. You get James Madison at home and then you get Southern Miss at home. We'll see what Southern Miss is. Is that a winnable ball game? All right. You're at South Alabama. That's going to be a tough. It's on the road. You're at Marshall on the road. That's going to be tough. You got Texas State at home. That's going to be tough. I mean, you're playing some good, some of the good games at home. Um, I mean, James Madison, Southern Miss, Texas State. Those are home games. All right. Um, going to be tough to take down James Madison and Texas State at home. But you get them at home. You're at Auburn. So they're playing in the same season at Texas and at Auburn. Good luck. Uh, you're at Arkansas State. Arkansas State could be playing for a division title. Uh, and then you get the Cajuns at home. Um, that could be, you know, it's the last game of the season, you know, is Mike Desimo fighting for his job? I don't think that's going to be the case. I think Cajuns will be better. Um, you know, they could be fighting for a division title uh, at the same time. All right. So, again, the expectations are not high. People do not expect a lot out of this ULM team. I'm telling you, they're going to beat somebody they're not expected to beat. Maybe it is just UAB. They beat Jackson State and they beat UAB. Here's the thing. You go out and beat Jackson State. Now, and you got a couple um, extra days. Is that right? Did I get that right? Let me see. Yeah, so Jackson State's on Thursday. Let's see if UAB, if they play Thursday. So Trent Dilfer will have, um, you know, the team's attention if, ULM goes out and beats. Um, oh, they're playing Thursday too. All right. So they so neither team will have uh, an advantage there. All right. So UAB gets Alcorn State. Oh, well. I thought there may be an advantage there for uh, ULM. But both teams are opening up on the 29th. Uh, and if, if ULM does beat Jackson State, then, you know, they'll have – UAB's attention. If you don't beat Jackson State and you don't beat UAB, it could be one of those seasons for ULM. It could spiral uh, quickly because now all of a sudden you're looking at 0 and 4. All right. With at Texas and at Troy, and then you're getting JMU coming in. You could be 0 and 5. That Southern Miss game is going to be tricky. That Southern Miss game, I mean, obviously, if they're 0-5, you know, Southern Miss needs to win that ball game. But if you're 2-3, and three, you beat Jackson State, you beat UAB, and you give James Madison a little run for their money, you know, that, that Southern Miss game has uh, just has a, a trap game written all over it for Southern Miss. Which game did they? They blew the App State game last year. They could have beaten Texas State last year, and then it kind of, they lost their juice uh, after that, right? They beat Army, which was a nice win. They beat Lamar. They started out 2-0, and lost to AM. It is what it is. Should have beaten App State. They could have started out the season 3-1, and lose to South Alabama 3-2. and You beat Texas State, you're 4-2. and And then maybe... The rest of it is different. You lost at Georgia Southern. Let's see what that one was. Uh, 38-28. Let's see if that was a late score to get back into it. Um, ULM scored 11. Let's see. It was, at one point in time, you know, 31-28. So Georgia Southern scored a late touchdown to make it a 10-point game. So you were in that game as well. Now, that's last year. A lot of those players aren't there anymore. Uh, so... Um, again, I think they're going to, well, we're going to give them two now. They're going to beat somebody that they're not supposed to beat. I will stress that throughout. Maybe that's Southern Miss and be interesting. If they are two and three and they don't get blown out by JMU, they'll probably be favored against Southern Miss at home. Not a big favorite, but they'll be favored at home. You got the Cajuns at home. You know, can you go on the road and, you know, hang with, you know, And hang with a Marshall, you know, hang with a South Alabama. 
you know, hang with Arkansas State. I'm taking that over right now. I'm telling you right now. If I get later on, if I can get one and a half, I'll take the over. Two and a half is pushing it. <laughs> two or two and a half is pushing it. I think that I think they're going to win at least two, and we'll see if they get to three. Uh, all right. Thank you so much for tuning in. Please subscribe to the channel. Trying to get to 1500 by August 31st. Again, I realize ULM is starting on the 29th, but opening day, and I've re- with that week zero baloney is the week before, but opening day for me is August 31st. So we still got a month and a half to get there. Please let everybody know about the channel. Um, we still have a couple of Sunbelt podcasts and the plan is for me to keep on doing it. So uh, appreciate everybody. Thank you so much. Have a great day. I'm your host, Dave Schultz, and you've been watching and listening to Lockdown Sunbelt, your team every day.